morning and we want to talk today about how to spot fake news and this is brought to you by the ODSS Library Learning Commons. So the first thing I want to tell you is that when you're evaluating information sources what are the top things that you already look for? Hmm. Let me present to you the CRAAP test. Now it sounds rude, but really CRAAP stands for Currency, Relevance, Authority, Accuracy, and Purpose. And the currency is simply, how timely is this information? Is this new, is the topic that I'm looking for new and going to rely on the newness of that information in order to be correct? Is it relevant? Is the importance of the information that I'm finding useful for what I actually need to research. Uh, authority is the source of the information, someone that is um, educated and experienced in this topic in order to be able to help me. And accuracy is this information reliable. Is it truthful and according to whose truth? And is it even correct? And finally, purpose. Why does this information exist in the first place? Is it for entertainment? Is it for persuasion? Or is it to change my behavior? Or is it simply factual? So when you're evaluating these information sources, what are these top things that you're going to be looking for? But have you ever caught yourself spreading misinformation? You were suddenly surprised that what you thought was true is not? Have you ever caught yourself in a moment of emotional panic when you were looking at information sources? Maybe suddenly what you found disproves what you were trying to, to argue in an assignment? Well, the crap test is fine, but in the year 2018, there are some things that we can do to be even more accurate with our research. Here's an example. So if you don't know this man on the left, his name is Sully, that's his nickname. And he had to make a quick decision one day in the year 2009 to land an airplane in the Hudson River. This is just on the west side of New York City. And Janice Crumbs was actually the very first person to tell this story and he did it through Twitter. And that tweet changed the world because people realized that social media was reporting faster than the news media. So in this case, who's the authority? Is it the pilot, Sully? Is it Janice Crumbs? It throws into whack our idea that pre-2009, we could rely on news media sources as the best source of information. Is that true anymore? Well, here's Janice Crumb's photo. He's the first person to launch this. And this is reported much later in the news. So authority is constructed. It's constructed because it requires a number of different perspectives in order to not have bias. And authority is also contextual. Whoever gets there first, as Janice Crumbs did, could be the authority in this case. Information creation is also a process. And sometimes the truth needs time for it to be revealed. Let me give you an example. We know that fake news is happening more and more often. This is only part of this graphic. But if you want to see, here are all of the biggest fake or junk news of the year of 2018. And they were reported um, all through various sources, but not until they were verified by Snopes.com were they revealed to be false. So that you can see that that's a really big deal. But this is a collaborative process. And this is what I mean by the truth about that fake news sometimes needed time for us to weigh the truth against other sources before we could make a decision that no, that actually is fake news. Again, that's different. It's not, that doesn't totally match our crap test anymore. And what about when 
our questions for research are part of a larger project. They're an inquiry project. You know this circle of research because you've probably been through it once per every class since you were in school. And we've learned now that, again, looking at data over time, sometimes changes our opinion and I thought this was a good example. Who is the who are the first people to use the internet? You can see the United States in their bright yellow is dominating but look how the increase is greatest when we incorporate other countries especially in Asia. So sometimes research is a big process and the truth isn't always obvious right away. Another thing is that we can look for authority in other places. If you're looking at bread cats, I think you should go to Reddit. I just found all of these ones on the left today about cats and bread. But if we're taking something a little more seriously, here's another post from Reddit in which someone asks, you know those self-lacing shoes that Nike's about to release? Well, do you think it would be possible to hack them? Because they do supposedly work maybe on Bluetooth. Hmm. And there's 95 comments with people arguing back and forth about that topic today. And if we can hack NBA player's shoes, could we also hijack a drone? All of this new information wouldn't be possible if we didn't have those conversations. And so that's my point in this piece of research. That sometimes new ideas require going to places where those new conversations are happening. And that way is actually part of a new approach to research and inquiry. Finally, Remember that searching now needs to be strategic. I mean, you can, if you want to, continue to use your Google searches, even though they're biased for what you last bought on Amazon. You can go to Wikipedia if you want to. It's a great starting point. But remember that the people who are contributing to Wikipedia pages almost always have their own bias. Bias that they're really in love with this topic, and so they're curating based on that, that um, that work that they've already been done, that they've already been doing, that's that they're biased about, and that it's often collaborative. So whose opinion is right? Well, let me suggest to you this, that in the ODSS Learning Commons, we've done a lot of that work for you. If you head into UG to go, there's some amazing digital resources there so that you can start to be strategic in your searching. So what have we learned? Source evaluation on the left. The tale of evaluating sources is as old as time. And this crap test relies on static and traditional sources. It's not going to be dynamic enough for the changing information environment that we're experiencing now and beyond. And with the addition of more and more fake news, things that are just too unbelievable to be believed and yet are being reported, means that we also need flexibility. We need time when we're learning and we're evaluating that source. We need to not be distracted by clickbait. And we need to somehow be able to be dynamic and constantly shifting along with whatever the news is that day. We need to be ready to verify it ourselves. Your own emotions are quite high. Do you think you're ready after all of this exploration? to set aside your own emotions and radically engage with logic and reason and self-imposed information seeking habits. Here's another example of an if I apply test. The first thing we'd suggest then, take some personal steps to identify your own emotions attached to your topic. Try to find unbiased references for the pop proper review of that topic and then summon the intellectual courage to seek authoritative voices on this topic that might be beyond your own thesis, that might disagree with you. 
And then in your own source steps, try this one. Instead of crap, try apply. Establish the authority. Does the author have education and experience in that field? What's the purpose and the point of view of that source? Does the author have an agenda beyond education or information? And similarly, does the publisher, does the publisher have an agenda? Look for a list of sources, like a bibliography. And finally, make sure that the year of publication is there. If you can establish all of those things, you have a good source. Finally then, you need to, if I, establish yourself in a topic and then apply these steps to encourage proper evaluation of the topic once you're, you're established. And the reason is that this shift is humanizing the evaluation process because we need to. In the year 2018, with all these changes coming, we don't know what's next. And for more help, visit us at the ODSS Library Learning Commons.